year after our successful climb of Aconcagua, the highest mountain in the Western Hemisphere, my old friend Bert Falk and I are back in Santiago, Chile to attempt to climb of the second highest, Lobos del Salado. Our group of 10 toured the old and the new in Santiago. The Chilean presidential palace was the scene of a 1973 military coup d'etat. In 1946, it became the presidential palace. In 1973, Wallis was bombed and party destroyed by the Chilean Air Force. <laughs> we got company. We got company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. At 7 the next morning, we boarded a bus for the 500-mile journey to the northern Chilean town of Copiapó. At a break along the way, we stopped to admire a flowering cactus. A bit later, we had an unscheduled stop. We have run out of gas. Here is the way that uh, gasoline is obtained on the highway in uh, the deserts of Chile. Copia I'll give a little perspective on the town. Careful preparations are underway at our Copia Motel for our journey into a remote part of the Atacama Desert. Some places there have never recorded rainfall. Now about uh, almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.50. Finally got in the vehicle back that had all the gasoline in a barrel that we're going to use on the trip. And uh, we're off and running. Our first night's camp was at a surprisingly green place near a ranch. We scrambled up a slope above an old mine. Our second campsite was nice too. We had to stop at the border police station. of about 12,000 feet and uh, we're supposed to, I believe, surrender our passports here. This is interesting. This is probably very much like the Nazca figures. Got that on there. It's the only one I think we're going to pass. It's like an upside down animal of some sort. Down here is a uh, salt lake. We're on the dry lake bed, the Salar de Maracunga. It is described as being the highest grade undeveloped lithium source in the Americas. Lithium is a hot commodity used in batteries for everything from electric cars to laptop computers. I explored an abandoned salt works building there. We stayed at the Lewis Murray Lodge, named in honor of a geologist killed in the helicopter crash on Olos del Salado in 1984. The lodge is a gift to Chile from Anglo-American mining, Murray's employer. Unfortunately, the lodge burned down a few years after our visit. Let's take a look That's around inside the inside this hut. They just pulled beer over and down again. Like the fresh? Like the mule. <laughs> The lodge had a nice view of Ojos del Salado through one of the windows. The next day, we hiked nine miles to Laguna Verde. The lake is home to a flock of flamingos. The elevation here is over 14,000 feet. Towering over us are some of the highest peaks in the Andes. This is Inca Huasi, 21,719 feet or 6620 meters. Oddly, we can splash around here without alpine clothing.
We find hot springs here, but it looks more inviting outside. Now we're going. Okay. Now this is it, folks. Looks like we're having a good time. Right? Yeah. Okay. Somebody say something terribly witty. Four thousand five hundred meters. We got hot springs. Incredible. Right. Surrounded by snow capped peaks. Okay. No. The next day, we set out for a conditioning climb of a nearby peak. Uh, an elevation of 15,900 feet. We're going to be following. Uh, okay, we started at uh, 15,900 and uh, we're going to find out just what we've reached. All right, we're on the top of this. What is the peak again? Name the peak. This is Cerro Radioactivo. Radioactivo. We read uh, elevation of 19,125 feet. This is the warm-up peak. Way to go, Tiger. Looking good. Karen is right over here. This is the first English ascent of this peak. You have a first ascent, sir. Well done, Charlie. And you look good, too. I'll give you one in a minute. You look real good. Good. Okay. Next, we moved ourselves and our equipment up to the Andino hut. The following day, seven of us climbed a peak to the northwest of El Bus del Salon. When we reached the top, we didn't find a cairn, so we assumed that we were the first ones up there. We left a note naming it Ojitos. And uh, that'll move our camp up to around 19,300 feet. On yesterday, give a little uh, close up. The hut where we'll spend the nights before and after the climb was named after the pilot of the helicopter that crashed on the host of Salado in 1984. amount of apprehension and uh, anticipation. We'll just see how it goes. A little less than 20,000 according to mine. Uh, beautiful sunshiny day. There's that peak we did the other day. Ojitos. There's the route. We did just return from the summit. We put five on that summit. The route was up through the gap. Needed ropes up uh, near the summit. We fixed a couple of ropes, worked out great. The rest of it was actually fairly straightforward. From where I'm sitting, it took us about, uh, what was it, Bert, about two and a half hours? Okay, two hours to the top from here. So that's uh, a real triumph, and it makes this whole trip a truly worthwhile venture. I have to say about that, that this was one of the toughest mountains that I've ever been on. The wind is howling up there. There must be temperatures, wind chill factors below zero. It must be 80 mile an hour winds. We could barely stand up. More like 40 or 50 miles an hour. The altitude is affecting my brain. And that's what counts. 
but I'm afraid they're going to be much slower and it's getting very late. So Bert and I and uh, Blaine are going down. It's going to be uh, okay. We're about ready to depart for El Salvador. We took a break to a beautiful desert stream called La Ola. Show the restaurant. Panoramic view of the town of El Salvador, where we spent last night. It's really rather than the hotel. Currently there are efforts to put a true mountain of luggage into a very small taxi. We'll see how that works out. is Ojos del Salon. And this is a fine aerial view of Cerro Aconcagua.